In a democracy, the government is periodically elected by the people in a free and fair manner. However, a government fails to be a democracy if the people don't enjoy any rights. Therefore, in this chapter, we will focus on the significance of rights, the exact meaning of rights, the fundamental rights of every Indian citizen, and how the citizens can use these rights. Let's start with the case study of the prisoners in the Guantanamo Bay, an island near Cuba. The island is under the jurisdiction of the U.S. Naval Forces. After the 9-11 attack on New York, the U.S. Defense Forces picked up about 600 people from all over the world and secretly held them captive at a prison in the Guantanamo Bay. The U.S. government claimed that these people were enemies of the country and were directly or indirectly responsible for the 9-11 attack. However, in most cases, the U.S. government did not even inform or ask the government of the countries these prisoners belonged to. The families of many prisoners came to know about their captivity from the media, like the family of Elbana. Elbana's nine-year-old daughter, Anas, on coming to know about her father's captivity, wrote a letter to the then Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, Tony Blair, requesting his release. These prisoners were held captive without any judicial intervention. An international human rights organization called Amnesty International managed to gather some information about these prisoners and reported that they were being tortured, which was against both the U.S. laws as well as international treaties. Prisoners protested through hunger strikes. The UN then set up an inquiry committee and found that many prisoners were not being released in spite of being proved innocent. The UN Secretary General ordered the sealing of the prison. However, the US government paid no heed to these appeals and protests. However, recently, President Barack Obama has promised to put a stop to this inhuman act as soon as possible. Another prominent example of people leading a life without rights is the citizens of Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is ruled by a monarch. The people of the country cannot form any political parties or initiate any political campaigns against the ruler. The media is also a puppet in the hands of the ruler. The people of the country are Muslims. People of other religions living in the country are allowed to follow their religion in private but not in public. Women in the country don't enjoy the same status as men. A testimony of one man is considered equivalent to that of two women. Such stories are not limited to monarchies alone. The ethnic massacre in Kosovo, a province of Yugoslavia before its split, is a story of similar injustice in a country where people elected their own representatives. Kosovo was ethnically an Albanian province. However, most of the people in the country were Serbs. In the 1999 elections, Milosevic, a Serb nationalist, won the elections and came to power. His motto was to make Yugoslavia a country dominated by the Serbs. He wanted that other ethnic minorities, such as the Albanians, should either leave the country or bow down before the Serbs. Therefore, he became hostile to the Albanians and started killing them. Batisha and her husband Izet were sitting in the kitchen when they heard the sound of explosions. Before they could realize it, soldiers of the Serbian troops barged into their kitchen. They shot her husband in the chest, pushed her out of the house, snatched her wedding ring and put her house on fire. 
Batisha was stranded in the rain without her family, her house and her husband. The Serbian troops continued this massacre under the leadership of Milosevic until other countries in the world intervened. Milosevic was tried in the International Court of Justice for his inhuman acts. Human beings crave for a secure, dignified and fair arrangement. The one thing common to the prisoners of the Guantanamo Bay, the women of Saudi Arabia and the Albanians and Kosovo is their being deprived of their basic rights. Everyone expects a system that assures security and dignity and is fair to all irrespective of race, caste, religion or gender. This desire for a system where a minimum is guaranteed to everyone, be it the powerful or the weak, the rich or the poor, the majority or the minority, is the real spirit behind aspiring for rights. Rights are legal and moral entitlements or claims of a person over other fellow beings, over society and over the government. Rights and duties are the two sides of the same coin. One cannot have a right that harms or hurts others. And this is possible only when one makes a claim that is equally possible for others. Thus, every right comes with an obligation to respect the rights of others. Therefore, it was not fair for the Serbs in Yugoslavia to drive out the Albanians and claim their right on the entire country. A claim cannot become a right unless it is recognized by society. Within a society, rules are made to regulate the conduct of people and emphasize the difference between right and wrong. Claims that are recognized by society as rightful form the basis of rights. With changing times, the scope and meaning of rights also changes. A classic example of this is that about 200 years ago, the fact that women had no right to vote was accepted worldwide. But today, stopping a woman from voting even in Saudi Arabia appears strange. To enforce a socially recognized claim in action, it needs to be written in the form of a law, or else it remains confined to the boundaries of a mere moral right. This is why the moral claim of not torturing or humiliating prisoners in the Guantanamo Bay could not be enforced. Disrespect of these rights is considered a violation or infringement of our rights. On violation of rights, citizens can approach a court of law to protect their rights. Therefore, you can say that claims need to be reasonable, recognized by society and sanctioned by law. In a democracy, every citizen has the right to vote and the right to be elected to government. Therefore, rights are the basic requirement to sustain a democracy. Citizens must have the right to express their opinion, form political parties and take part in all sorts of political activities for the elections to be called democratic. Rights play a special role in a democracy to protect the minorities from being suppressed by the majorities. When majority groups try to dominate minorities, it is the government's duty to intervene and protect the rights of the citizens. However, if the elected government is corrupt, there are many chances that they themselves attack the rights of their own citizens. To handle such situations, some rights need to be enforced by an authority higher than the government, such as the constitution. In most democracies, such as in India, the basic rights of a citizen are documented in the constitution, which serves as a set of rules for the government to follow.
like other democracies in the world. In India also, the constitution lays down the rights of all Indian citizens. The preamble to the Indian constitution promises to give the citizens of India equality, liberty and justice. To put this promise into practice, the Indian constitution has defined six fundamental rights for all citizens of the country. These rights include the right to equality, the right to certain freedoms, the right against exploitation, the right to freedom of religion, cultural and educational rights, and the right to constitutional remedies. Starting with the right to equality, let's take a close look at what each of them means. The right to equality states that the government shall not deny any citizen of India equality before the law or equal protection of the law. The law says that no distinction will be made between a political leader, a government official and an ordinary citizen. This is called the rule of law and it forms the foundation of every democracy. According to the rule of law, even the Prime Minister of the country, in case of charges against him, will have to go to court, give evidence and file papers without any special treatment. The right to equality also states that the government cannot discriminate among citizens on the grounds of religion, caste, ethnicity, sex or place of birth. Every citizen has the right to access all public places such as shops, restaurants, hotels, cinema halls, public wells, tanks, bathing ghats, roads, playgrounds and places of public resorts maintained by the government or dedicated to the use of the general public. This right also applies to public jobs. No citizen can be denied an employment opportunity or appointment to any position in the government or be discriminated against or made ineligible for employment on the above grounds. So, aren't reservations for minority groups against the right to equality? The Indian Constitution states that reservation for minority groups such as scheduled castes, scheduled tribes, other backward classes, women and the physically handicapped is not a violation of the right to equality. This is because reservations do not give any special privileges. They only facilitate equal opportunity. In India, an extreme form of social discrimination is the practice of untouchability, which is especially rampant in remote villages and small towns amidst illiterate people. The Untouchability Offences Act 1955 states that practicing untouchability is a punishable offence. The right to equality also mandates the abolition of titles awarded by a foreign state such as Rai Bahadur or Khan Bahadur. 
The second fundamental right in the Indian constitution is the right to certain freedoms. Freedom, as the name suggests, is about living freely without any constraints or interference. The Indian constitution grants all citizens of India the right to certain freedoms. The right to freedom of speech and expression states that all citizens have the freedom to think differently and express their views accordingly. This right empowers them with the freedom to communicate and express their opinion. The freedom of the press derives from the freedom of speech and expression. Unlike the Constitution of the United States, the Indian Constitution does not have a specific provision for the freedom of the press. Every citizen is free to express his or her views for or against the government or activities of an association through pamphlets, magazines, newspapers, paintings, poetry or songs. However, it does not give you the right to instigate violence, incite people to rebel, defame others by spreading false rumors or cause damage to a person's reputation. The right to assemble in a peaceful manner, without any arms, allows every citizen the freedom to hold meetings, processions, rallies, demonstrations, exchange ideas, mobilize public support and seek votes in an election. However, this right does not allow you to hold public meetings that disrupt law and order in society. The right to form associations and unions grants all citizens of India the freedom to form or be part of an association or union such as a workers' union or a campaign association against pollution. All citizens of India have the right to move freely throughout the country. However, in public interest, the government can impose reasonable restrictions on travelling and movement. For example, in situations of an emergency or epidemic, the government may restrict travel. Every citizen has the freedom to reside in any part of the country. For example, a person belonging to Orissa is free to live in any other state of India such as Punjab, Maharashtra or Andhra Pradesh. However, in the interests of the general public, citizens from other states and Kashmiri women marrying men from other states are restricted from purchasing land or property in the state of Jammu and Kashmir. Every citizen of India is also free to choose the profession he or she wants to follow. Other than these six rights to freedom, the constitution also grants all citizens of India the right to life and personal liberty. However, this excludes citizens undergoing a legal procedure. According to this right, it is a criminal offence to kill any person except under a death sentence issued by the court of law. No government or police official is allowed to detain or arrest anyone without sufficient legal justification. In case of detention or arrest, the constitution mentions a procedure to be followed. The procedure states that any person who is arrested and detained 
has a right to be informed about why he or she has been arrested or detained. The arrested person needs to be produced before the nearest magistrate within 24 hours of the arrest. Any person in such circumstances has the right to seek legal advice from a lawyer. The case studies about the prisoners of Guantanamo Bay and the Albanians in Kosovo are examples of people being deprived of this right to life and personal liberty. Now, coming back to the fundamental rights in the Indian Constitution, the third fundamental right is the right against exploitation. This right lays down clear provisions to prevent exploitation of the weaker sections of society. It prohibits trafficking in human beings, that is, buying and selling of human beings, especially women and children, for immoral purposes. It also forbids forced labor or begar in any form where a person is forced to render free service or is paid nominally. The Indian constitution has made child labor illegal in the country. It forbids children below the age of 14 from working in any factory, mine or in any other hazardous conditions. We have seen the first three fundamental rights, namely the right to equality, the right to certain freedoms, and the right against exploitation. India has no official religion. The people of India follow different religions, making India a secular state. Every citizen of India has the right to freely profess, practice, and propagate any religion. Individuals are free to change their religion at their will. However, no one can compel another person to convert into a religion by means of force, fraud, inducement, or allurement. The Indian constitution bans ill treatment in the name of religion and religious practices such as the sacrifice of animals or forcing a widow to shave her head and dress in white. The right also prohibits the government from discriminating on the basis of religion or forcing people to pay taxes for the promotion or maintenance of any particular religion or religious institution. Did you know India is an 80% Hindu country, yet its Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh is a Sikh. The leader of its largest political party, the Congress, is Ms. Sonia Gandhi, who is a Catholic of Italian origin. And the country's vice president is a Muslim. Similarly, educational institutions managed by private bodies cannot compel anyone to participate in any religious instruction or attend any religious worship. Minority groups in India can feel neglected or undermined under the impact of language, religion and culture of the majority. For example, Sikhs are a majority in Punjab, but a minority in other states, such as Rajasthan, Haryana, or Delhi. Therefore, to protect the interests of the minority groups, the Constitution of India has laid down the fifth fundamental right, which speaks about the cultural and educational rights of minorities. Every section of citizens with a distinct language or culture has the right to conserve it. Any educational institution run by the government or receiving grants from the government cannot deny admission to any citizen on the grounds of religion or language. Every minority community has the right to establish and administer an educational institution of their choice. The right to enforce all these fundamental rights mentioned in the Indian Constitution is called the right to constitutional remedies. It allows you to seek legal assistance from courts if any of your constitutional rights are violated. Did you know, 
In 1993, the National Human Rights Commission or NHRC was set up by law to secure all the rights granted by the Constitution to the citizens. Any citizen can write to the NHRC to complain against the violation of a constitutional right. You can approach the Supreme Court or the High Court of your state. Even the President of India cannot stop you from approaching the Supreme Court to secure your fundamental rights. Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar called this right the heart and soul of our constitution. No law or action can violate the fundamental rights. The right states that any act of the legislature or the executive or any other government authority that takes away or limits any fundamental right will be considered invalid. An ordinary citizen can challenge the laws of the central and state governments, the policies and actions of the government or of governmental organizations. The Supreme Court and the High Court of any state are authorized to issue directions, orders or writs for enforcement of the fundamental rights. The judiciary in India is independent of the government and the parliament. A case seeking relief from the violation of any fundamental right, which is in the interests of the public, is known as a public interest litigation or PIL. Any citizen or a group of citizens can approach the Supreme Court or a High Court for the protection of public interest against a particular law or action of the government. You can write your grievance to the judge on a postcard too. The rights of Indian citizens are now not limited to the fundamental rights granted by the constitution alone, but cover a wider range. Some rights are derived from the fundamental rights and have been expanded accordingly. Let's take a closer look at some of these rights. The right to freedom of press and the right to information are derived from the fundamental right of freedom of thought and expression. In the 1900s, the press became liberal in India. In 2005, the Government of India passed the Right to Information Act, which makes it mandatory for all government offices to provide timely response or information to all Indian citizens. Similarly, in 2008, the Parliament passed the Right to Education Bill. Under this right, every child up to 14 years of age has the right to free and compulsory education. The scopes of rights have also expanded over the last few years. For instance, according to a new law passed by the Supreme Court, the right to life also includes the right to food. The Constitution of India also provides for rights that are constitutional rights but not derived from or are not extensions on any fundamental right, such as the right to property and the right to vote in elections. In addition to all these rights, there are a set of human rights that are gaining importance and popularity in democratic countries all over the world. These rights are not necessarily approved by law, but have expanded in scope due to international covenants. Some of these rights are the right to work, right to safe and healthy working conditions, right to adequate standard of living, right to social security, right to health, and the right to education. The Constitution of South Africa grants several new rights to its citizens, such as the right to privacy, under which citizens have the right to deny their houses being searched, their phones being tapped, or their communication being opened. It also grants the right to a safe environment that is not injurious to their health or well-being, the right to have access to adequate housing, the right to have access to healthcare services and sufficient food and water, with no one being refused emergency medical care. Therefore, you can see that the scope and meaning of rights have evolved over the years through the judicial system and the National Human Rights Commission.